Hello everybody, my name is Zach, aka The Weather Gamer, bringing you <clears throat> LDL G-Max's draft recap. So, I am back in LDL, we are running as the Chicago Bear Ticks. Um, I am serious about retiring the Chicago Bear Ticks. Um, I've already contacted Luca about commissioning a uh, new logo. Um, to And then I'm officially putting the Bear Ticks to rest. I will stop using it. Um, I'm going to have, like one or two more runs with it and then I'm I'm serious it's time to retire the bear ticks it's been three years they've had a good run but as all good um, things must come to an end so this is Wi-Fi um, so this will be played on sword and shield I did not return to PBAL because it's being played on um, also I just moved my mic for absolutely no reason so I apologize if audio got <laughs> messed up. I thought I was moving my camera mic and I moved my or camera boom and I moved my mic boom. Um, I didn't return to PBAL because it's Sword and Shield and I have no interest in playing on Swish or not Sword and Shield, uh, BDSP. I have no interest in playing BDSP um, meta so it will be Sword and Shield. It is Wi-Fi so obviously it's Galar Dex plus um Oh, Crown Tundra plus um, Isle Armor. So there's still quite a few mons that are good to use. Um, you just don't have everything. Um, anyways, I ended up with, I believe, the ninth or 10th pick. It was... It was not... Sorry, I just ate, so I'm kind of <laughs> burping here. Um, it was not the best of draft positions, um, so I kind of had to do what I could with what I had. Um, Garchomp went early, but I wasn't planning to draft it. Um, I really, I don't know. With me pivoting away from, because Garchomp used to be my first pick for so many leagues, I ran Garchomp, and then I just wanted to explore some different dragons for the time being, you know, Mega Alt in, um, NCL, I've got Tyrantrum and SBT. Um, I just, I've wanted to try other dragons. It's not that I don't like using Garchomp. It's not that I'm bored of using Garchomp. It's just, I claim to be a dragon master, and yet all I do is draft Garchomp. It's not really mastering dragons. I need to go back and play with some of the other dragons. Um, I tried Gudra, but that team in NCL just didn't fit with Gudra with all the snipes, so I needed to pivot away. So, I didn't know what to do with my first pick. I'm just looking at the tiers. Obviously, Urshifu's gone. Dragapult's gone. Chomp's gone. Um, Coco's gone. Lando's gone. So, most of the big heavy hitters were gone. So, I was just like, well, let's just take something that I enjoy. And I grabbed Corviknight round one. I know that's strange, but... I didn't foresee Corviknight making it back to me in round two, and I really didn't have another round one pick that I want. Yeah, Zygarde was gone. Um, so just like, well, Corviknight it is. We'll start building a Fairy Dragon Steel Core, and Corviknight has not let me down in the past. I always get one game every season, every league I use Corviknight in. I get one game where I sweep with Body Press. Corviknight. It's going to happen in LDLG Max. When, I don't know, but Corviknight's going to do it. Obviously, pressure stall sets are really, really nice. Um, the bulk up set is very good. It does have defog, can pivot, giving me steel and flying type, has ways to hit other steel types with body press. Is it a round one pick? Probably not, but I was really just scratching my head. I wasn't taking a big premier dragon. Um, none of the fairies I wanted were worth round one, so I was just like, yeah, Corviknight. So I picked up Corviknight. Going into round two, I can already hear your comments, I can already see your comments, I can already feel your comments. Zach, didn't you say in your New Year's Eve video you were going to stop drafting this mon? Why are you drafting Corviknight in this mon? 1-2. This is what you always do. You are unoriginal. Try something different. Okay, shut up. You're all valid in that point. Yes, I drafted Cinderace again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. I just... I was working at the time, and I totally brain dead, and I was like, Cinderace. And I was like, you dumb dumb, you just drafted Cinderace again, which I believe now puts Cinderace as the all-time most drafted mod. I believe it just broke the tie with... It's either tied or it's broken, the tie with Zero or in Serb. What can I say? You all know I use Cinderace very, very effectively. I'm very good at hitting Pyro Balls. Bulk Up Set is really, really nice. Banded Set, Scarf Set. Um, good coverage in Iron Head and High Jump Kick, Gunk Shot. Um, obviously, U Turn to Pivot. That's the one thing I will say about Libero Race with no U Turn in NCL. I really, really miss U-Turn. I, I would honestly, I'd rather have standard Blaze Ace without Libero over Blaze Ace. Um, or over Libero Ace, because I really, really miss the ability to U-Turn in NCL and Pivot. I have to baton pass or hard switch, and I don't like doing that because it kills my momentum way too much. I also have a pivoting pair now with uh, uh, Corviknight and Cinderace. I'll deal with the bulky waters later in the draft. Um, but yes, I have Corviknight and Cinderace. How original. Going into round three, um, I was going to draft Primarina. Shut up, I know. I draft the same mods all the time. Primarina got sniped. I was like, okay, well, fine. This gives me a chance to try out another fairy. And so Tapu Lele is returning to the squad. Um, which Tapu Lele actually is really good for my team. You'll see later in the draft that... I have a couple of Mons that don't like taking Mach Punch or Ice Shard on my team, and getting Terrain to counter that, and nothing on my ter uh, team really needs to have priority. I don't have any priority users, really. Other, you know, Cinderace, Sucker Punch, but I've never used Sucker on Cinderace. But Layla gives me Psychic Terrain, nice speed tier um, at 95. Obviously, it's got very good typing. It gives me my Fairy and Steel type for my Fairy Dragon Steel Core. Um, it's a good Specs user, good Scarf user. It can set up. It has Recovery and Draining Kiss. It's just, it's a really well-rounded Mon um, across the board. And I actually, later in the draft, you'll see, I kind of play into the terrain aspect of it more so, too. Um, just the way chips fell, it kind of worked that way actually only suffered um, three snipes the entire draft. I lost Primarina, I lost another Mon, which I'll talk about, and then I lost a third Mon, which I will talk about later in the draft. Um, sorry. I'm... <sighs> okay, I had a hiccup coming and I didn't want to squawk on camera because if anyone's heard my hiccups i uh i tend to squawk uh we drafted nido king so like i said i kind of oh um i lost gengar that was the next one um i lost gengar i was gonna take gengar i know how original but it's a nice speed tier it fits my team can't be shadow snuck instead i get nido king um i have nido king in this and sbt because i picked up nido king there it's been a while since I'd used Nido King, and I want to. I, I call it the Gudra effect, you know, where I took Gudra and it, I thought it was a terrible mod, and it had a really, really good season for me. I did it with. Well, technically, the Gudra effect is applied to Tyrantrum and SBT. Um, you know, I started. It went 1 and 6 the first time I used it, and I started with a 6 hour sweep on it, so. Um, I'm trying to revisit some of these old mons that I said that um, I wouldn't use ever again and just see if, now that I've become more experienced, if I can use them. Because the more variety I have, the less snipes hurt, and the more variety of teams I build. So, Nido King's fantastic. I mean, Sheer Force, Life Orb, Choice Specs, Scarf, gives me rocks, technically. Um, because it's a Gen 1 mon, it has a vast move pool from gen one it gets oh what all does this thing get ice beam thunderbolt fire i think it gets fire blast it might be flamethrower um oh nito king smoking. Smoking. 
Smeagol. Uh, it gets Aqua Tail on the physical side. It gets Avalanche Ice uh, on the physical side. It has Blizzard. Uh, Bubble Beam. Uh, Dragon Pulse. Uh, obviously, Earthquake. It gets Fire Blast and Flamethrower. It gets Focus Blast. Um, it gets Hex for Ghost Coverage. Um, Ice Beam. Icy Wind for uh, Speed Control. Mega Horn. Um, Outrage. I mean, it's just... It's one of those mons that has so much coverage. It gets Surf on the special side. Um, that Thunder, Thunderbolt, yeah. It just, it gets, oh, it gives me T-Spikes too. Water Pulse. It just, it has so much coverage that it can handle so many problems that come up against it. Um, because it's a Gen 1 mon, and they got all the coverage, so... Yeah, that's we take Nido King here um, as my opposing fairy killer to back up um, Corviknight and to give me a ground type because I've learned if I don't have a solid ground type, my team's start uh, struggle to get going. Uh, we came around and picked up Vaporeon. So again, Vaporeon, another one of those mons that I have not used in a while. With Primarina down, I went for another bulky water type that can pivot. I love my pivoting. Pivoting is kind of my um, style. If I can pivot, then I can get in and keep matchup favorable for myself. Obviously, Vaporeon has Flip Turn. There's Wish Protect, Haze, Scald, um, Ice Beam for coverage. Um, but really, the, being more of a defensive cleric, bulky water type is um, what I've got. Plus, I can absorb water type hits for Cinderace and Nidoking. Corviknight, Cinderace pair beautifully and being able to break out the grass types, bulky grass types. And like I said, it's three mons now that can pivot between Corviknight, Cinderace, and uh, Vaporeon, which is very, very critical for some mons I have later in the draft. Like this one. <laughs> I picked up Tyrantrum again. Um, King Tyranno. Um, Daddy T whatever I'm going to call it. Um, I have had so much fun in three games in SBT that I just had to grab Tyrantrum again. Um, this is going to probably be the Garchomp for a while where I'm just slamming Tyrantrum until it doesn't function well. It's just been fun. Tyrantrum is really, really good when it can pivot in. When you can pivot into it, take advantage of the matchup and get a Dragon Dance off. Head Smash when it hits... So, I'm just going to tell you right now. My sets in SBT have been pretty much Dragon Dance, uh, whatever moves I need, and then Wide Lens, because while Head Smash is 77%, and I don't want to jinx it, I hit Head Smashes like I hit Pyro Balls. I just don't miss that often. Um, even with it still being 77%, I just don't miss that often. I think I've missed one so far in SBT. And I miss like one or two power balls a season with Cinderace right now. Granted, this is gonna be a season where I miss all of them, but um, I don't know. I love Tyrantrum. It's my favorite of the fossil Pokemon. When I saw it in Gen Six, I was like, "That has got to be on my team. That's probably gonna be my favorite Mon of Gen Six. And yeah, for the most part, I was right. It is my favorite Gen Six Mon. Um, I love it. It just hits like a truck. It can be banded and scarfed, but so far I've basically been able to get away with running Dragon Dance every time. Um, it has close combat. It has, obviously, it's Dragon and Rock Stab. It has Earthquake. It gets play rough for some reason. I don't know why, but Tyrantrum gets play rough, which is amazing. Obviously, Rock Head for recoil is fantastic because of Head Smash. Um. Strong Jaw is really, really nice. It's got dark coverage and crunch. It gets, I believe it gets all the fangs, too, if I remember correctly. Um, Tyrantrum. I know it gets Ice Fang because I used it to beat a Gliscor. Um, it's Close Combat. Dragon Claw. Earthquake. Fire Fang. Um, Ice Fang. 
Poison Fang, Psychic Fang, so I can break uh, ground types or grass, bulky grass types against it too. Um, it gets Scale Shot, which is kind of fun. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't get Swords Dance, but it does get uh, Scale Shot, so you go plus one on a Dragon Dance and then Scale Shot to get to plus two. Um, yes, it does get Thunder Fang, and it gets Zen Headbutt too for some reason. The Play Rough is probably going to be your better attack against fighting types. And this is also one of the Mons that does not appreciate Mach Punch um, or Ice Shardy when it's Rock type. Um, so it's definitely um, good to have anti Ice Shard and anti um, Mach Punch because Tyrantrum is so slow. It usually takes one, if not two, Dragon Dances for it to get up and running so but as long as i play tyrantrum smart and i dragon dance at the right time you know i can just roll with tyrantrum so i'm very very excited to have it again i get delmize so this is where the third snipe happened um my backup pick to um gengar was gonna be decidueye and decidueye went like four picks ahead of me and as soon as that happened i'm like okay well Shit, Delmize is going to be going very, very quickly. I can't afford to wait for it, and as it turns out, I was right, because I sniped about four people on Delmize. Delmize is nice, it gives me, it's basically triple stab because of Steelworker. Steel-type moves get um, boosted as well. Anchor Shot is really good for trapping, um, obviously Ghost and Grass Stab, um, it gets rapid spin it is anti-spin on my side it also prevents spin blockers from coming in on me because they don't want to take a ghost type hit um it's just it's really nice i wish i had decidueye but i'll take delmize because of the fact that from a speed tier standpoint it works out a little bit better and you know it's still gonna hit like a truck um the one thing with um, Delmize is I have to hit Poltergeists, so that's that's the key there. Uh, going into the next round, so I noticed how poor my speed tiers were. I had only Cinderace above base 100, and Lele's at 95, but at this point also most of the fast bonds are gone. I went ahead and grabbed Heliolus because I didn't have an electric type at this point, and there were not a whole lot of electric types left that played very well. Heliolus is nice. It can Volt Switch and Pivot into Tyrantrum. It breaks down. I basically went Grass and Electric the last two picks in order to try and take out Bulky Waters because, once again, my team really struggles with Bulky Waters besides, you know, Neo King shooting off a Thunderbolt or... Um, yeah, that was it at the time, actually. And Neo King doesn't want to take water hits um, in retaliation. So it does give me another water immunity in the fact that it gets um, dry skin. So if I can't bring Vape, but I can't bring Healy, um, I can still take advantage of that. Obviously, Solar Power, if I face off a Sun Team or um, set Sun up for some reason, I can take advantage of that. I have to check with Jet, because I do know there's a Sand team running around. I have to check with Jet and see if I can run Sand Veil or not, because if I can run Sand Veil, I can get kind of cheeky with it. Healy has decent coverage. You know, it's got Electric Normal. Um, it gets Surf. It gets Dragon Pulse. Um, so it's got some nice techie stuff um, as well. The Surf is really nice, because I can kind of spook opposing ground types from coming in, unless I'm choice locked. So... Healy. Um, oh, okay, so I got sniped four times. I got sniped on Prima, Gengar, Decidueye, and then my Dark type I also got sniped on. So I ended up taking Zorark here. Again, another mon above base 100. But I lost Scrafty. I was going for Scrafty to give me a Dark um, and Fighting type. Um, it was going to be a nice cheap mon so I could spend points elsewhere, but. Unfortunately, somebody else had that idea. It was going to give me a physically defensive mon as well, too, because right now Tyrantrum and Corviknight are my two Fizz Def mons, so um, 
This is going to be nice to have a Fizz Def or Spidef Mon. Um, this graphic gives you that fantastic ability to be both with Assault Vest plus Intimidate. This graphic is just fun. I really enjoy it. It's probably my favorite fighting type to use, so that's why I was going for it again. But that's not to say I can't have shenanigans with Zorark because Zorark can obviously disguise itself. It has a U-turn, so it can um, pivot around if it wants to disguise as Corviknight. I can, uh, technically I can disguise it as Nidoking, uh, because it does have some coverage like Nidoking does, like, like Flamethrower and Sledge Bomb. So I could technically hide it as Nidoking, which would be kind of fun. Um, that way I don't take a Psychic hit to the face. Um, I could disguise it as Cinderace with U-Turn. Um, I, I can play around with Zorark, um, but it gives me a ghost immunity, so. And another high speed and special attacker, so. Now these last two picks are where I really start to play into Lele's terrain. This was just by necessity, because or by kind of necessity and choice. I needed a fighting type, I also needed either a bug and an ice type. I for went ice typing on this team, which means I'm going to be relying on Tyrantrum, Ice Fang, Vaporeon, Ice Beam, Needle King, Ice Beam, um, really as my ice coverage, um, unfortunately, for an ice type mon. But um, I pick up two unburdened mons back to back. Um, so I do actually kind of play off of Lele's terrain a little bit. First up, I picked up Hitmonlee. Gives me rapid spin, gives me a fighting type, gives me a mon that I want to continue to try and use. I've had a lot of success with Hitmon Chan. Um, I've not been able to use Hitmon Top, so I don't know how that plays out. And Hitmon Lee, I've not had a ton of success with, but I think with an actual terrain team and having Hitmon Lee on the terrain, this might play out um, alright, just because I can unburden boost and catch uh, Scarfers reverse. Sweet potential if I can get a bulk up plus terrain up. Um, or unburden boost plus um, bulk up. I can do some damage. It gives me knockoff as well. Hitmonlee gets knockoff, which is nice. Because um, my dark type generally will not be running knockoff, and the fact that Zorak tends to run special, not physical. Um, it does have poison jab, I believe. I also think it gets iron head. I'm not 100% certain on that. Um, it's a Gen 1 mod, so it does have quite a bit of coverage, and yeah, it's another hazard removal, so. Because I've had problems with hazard removal the last few drafts where I just don't have good enough removal, and I'm getting pinned down by sticky webs or worn down by rocks, so. And then the final mod to finish out this draft is a Selgor. Also has Unburden, which I can play into the Psychic Seed. Also u turns so I can pivot around if need be gives me spikes gives me t spikes as well if i remember correctly it might just be spikes i don't know if it gets t spikes but yeah it's it's fast at uh 145 i believe i think it's 145 which means it's technically faster than pult and zero aura um uh, so yes it is it is faster than both zero aura and pult which is nice if I run into either one of those. Um, I can mess around with them by being faster. Um, a subboard does have decent coverage um, in the fact that, you know, not only does it have bug coverage, but it does get focus blast, it gets giga drain for recovery, um, it gets. Technically, it gets mud slap or mud shot for ground type. Um, has sludge bomb for poison. Um, it does give me T spikes. Does not give me. Oh, it does give me spikes. Um, I can U turn with it. It does get water shuriken, which is kind of nice. Um, I can hit opposing fire types potentially coming in um, on it. Um, sticky hold if I don't want to lose my item. Unburden obviously to double my speed, which would be really really nice. Um, somebody teched me. Oh, it's probably been a year or a year and a half ago. Somebody teched me with a Selgor. Um, I had rain, and they brought a Selgor with Sash, and then they were able to beat me with um, a Selgor because I triggered their Unburden. Um, 
and they were able to reverse sweep me because they were faster. So, while the Silgord probably is not going to do a ton this season, because it just, pure bug type doesn't have a ton of good matchups, it does give me another unburdened abuser that I could potentially use against um, at least a rain team, maybe even a uh, sand team, depending on what I'm facing. So, that's going to be the team. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. If you think this is a good team, if you think I'm going to get smoked. Uh, the last time we played in LDL, we did get into finals, and then Save I proceeded to drop a 6-0. So, I am thirsty and hungry for revenge. But let me know what you guys think down below, and I'll see you guys next time.